All right, here we are at chapter 13 of Reasons and Persons. Um, and at this point, we have just been through Parfit's extended discussion of personal identity. That is, addressing predominantly this question. What makes one person the same as an earlier person or a later person? What um, he hasn't really spent much time discussing, he sort of assumed, is this, the answer to this question. What is a person? Why should we care about what makes, why should we care about this question uh, unless we know why the answer to that question is important? Um, so let's say a little bit about that. Uh, I said, um, at the beginning of our discussion of personal identity, that uh, Parfit's discussion owes a lot to Locke. And Locke does draw this distinction that Parfit refers back to uh, at one point in, in one of these chapters uh, between uh, human and person. And you can be, yes, it comes up in the discussion of abortion that we're going to get to. Um, that we are both humans and persons, and humans are essentially biological organisms. They're a kind of animal. And um, we're the same human from, well, uh, when do we begin as a human? Some people would say from, from conception. You are an organism from conception. Uh, and some people would say at some point during gestation, during the nine months, you become a human being. Uh, you know, that's, that's an open debate. It, it, do you think an acorn is an oak tree or is it something that turns into an oak tree? Uh, th that's the same issue. They're obviously the same organism, but you know, uh, would you say that uh, the acorn was an oak tree? So you, know, you could say, when I was conceived, you can refer to uh, that blastocyst, that you know, single cell, as you. Um, or you can say, when I s developed in the womb. You know, that your answer to that question kind of affects the abortion debate. Well, not necessarily uh, according to the distinction between human and person, because according to Locke and Parfit, person is more important. And the person is defined, as we saw, psychologically. Um, he, he, look, uh, he sides with the psychological criterion of identity. That is, what, what makes the, uh, one person the same as uh, another person is if the later person stands in relation R to the earlier person. And what that means is a, a sort of cluster of psychological relationships. So going backwards from the later one are things like memory, uh, pers but, but going both ways is sort of personality. Do, does person is personality preserved? Memory is obviously very important, but it's not the only part of relation R. And of course, going from the earlier to the later is intentions. Why is the later person doing this? Because uh, the earlier person formulated a plan and decided to do that, and that's what caused the later one. So that's an earlier to later relation, part of relation R, and the, the later one remembering the earlier one is a later to earlier. But it's all sort of psychological stuff. And as we saw, Parfit argued that my physical body doesn't really matter. Um, and that's why he thinks that it's okay to use the Star Trek transporter. If you believe in the physical criterion of identity, you wouldn't use the, um, the Star Trek transporter because uh, the, the thing that appears on the, the person that appears on um, Mars doesn't have a single atom in common with the, the person who pressed the button on Earth. So there's literally nothing physically in common. Now, they're, they're qualitatively identical, that is, uh, atom for atom replica, but not made of any of the same stuff. And we use the physical criterion for other stuff. So for example, if, um, I don't know, uh, if the Taj Mahal was completely obliterated, somebody dropped an atom bomb on the Taj Mahal, 
but then they had the, the blueprints and they made a perfect replacement of it so that nobody could tell the difference, but it was made out of entirely new stone. We wouldn't say it was the same Taj Mahal. We would say that's a new Taj Mahal because we used the physical criterion of identity for the Taj Mahal. It has to be made. It doesn't have to be made of all the same stuff. You can replace a few bricks here and there, but you can't remove it entirely and then replace it with, uh, remove all of it and replace it all at the same time. That's what we say about physical objects. Uh, now, people who believe in the physical criterion apply the same um, standard to humans, and, and Puffett says that's just wrong. But what, why does person matter? Well, as Locke said, um, person is, the, is a forensic term, and what he meant by that, it's, uh, it concerns your moral status. So, person is used in ethics um, as an entity that, has per that potentially has rights. Uh, animals, uh, a cre merely being a, um, uh, an organic creature, doesn't necessarily give you rights. Certainly if you, you eat meat, you don't think that uh, you're, I presume, you, think, you don't think that you're necessarily violating rights in eating meat, even though you're killing organic, you're killing animals. Um, but if animals were persons as well, we would say, oh, then you're doing something wrong because persons are the sort of rights bearers. So it is important to discuss persons, and they're the things that, are, that matter. Okay, now, um, what is Parfit's answer to this question? We've seen. He said he, he's come up with a uh, he's come up with a theory of personal identity, which is relation R with no branching. But then he goes on to say the no branching part. We just had that in there because we were trying to make sense of the concept of identity. An identity being the same, has to be a one-to-one -one relationship. It can't branch. So, uh, you know, the original can't be the same as lefty and righty in my division. It can't be both of them. That's why division is the same as death if you believe in personal identity, because lefty and righty can't both be um, the same as the original, and therefore the only logical answer is that neither of them is the same, so therefore the original person doesn't exist. Parfit says that's crazy. Obviously, um, double success can't be, shouldn't be a failure. So what really matters is relation R. Now, then he says, OK, once we've established that what really matters is relation R, so what I should really care about is not if I exist in the future, um, because that's a, a, a concept that's, uh, that's where identity is built into it. But what I should care about is that there's a future being that stands in relation R to me. And if there's lots of them, even better. You know, so if I divide, that's actually pretty good. Now he does concede that you know, that can cause problems because both of them want to be married to my wife and things like that. But in general, you get twice as many ears that way, and one of them can do try one plan of life, and the other one can try another, so you get to, to see all of your potential dreams realized. You get to be a mountaineer and a, a skydiver and whatever. They get to try everything the more you divide. So relation R is what matters. But relation R also can admit of degrees. So uh, what we discover is that I should care less about a future person if the relation is kind of degraded. In other words, if there are fewer connections between this, and there inevitably will be, between me in 10 years has fewer connections with me than me in a minute, obviously. Um, so the, the me in 10 years is less, should be less important to me now. I should care less about them. And the implications of this come up um, uh, in this chapter and in the, the other two that we're going to look at. A word about reductionism. Parfit says he's a reductionist, and he criticizes non-reductionists. And the simplest form of non-reductionist is, um, is Descartes. So if you're a reductionist, you say, 
uh, what I am can be captured by basically a physical, uh, or a scientific description of me that captures all of my atoms. So Puppet doesn't believe that in non-physical stuff like souls. They don't exist, according to him. Descartes says they do. So Descartes says, uh, what makes me the same, uh, uh, me now as the same as me in the future is that there's, there's this one thing that doesn't change at all. Whereas Parfit says, no, I'm made of stuff that's changing all the time. There is nothing that doesn't change. There, is a, there isn't this one unchanging thing that persists through time. If there was, then personal identity would make sense. I would be a one unchanging thing, and if that thing was there, then it's me, and if that thing isn't there, then it's not me. It's a simple yes, no. But as we saw in the spectrum arguments, that just isn't the case. I'm made of constantly changing things. I'm more like a river uh, than a single, you know, single uh, atom that doesn't change. So given that fact, given that I'm a constantly changing stream of things, that's me. There's nothing more to me than that. Um, it doesn't make sense to be committed to this idea of personal ide identity that pretends that I'm either 100% there or I'm 100% not there. Either I'm alive or I'm dead. Either that's me in the future or it isn't. That idea only makes sense if you're a non-reductionist. If there's this thing, this further fact, that never changes. And Puffett says there just isn't. So um, once you give up on that idea, what does that imply? What does reductionism imply? And we see some of the implications. Um, so, uh, well, but to... At this point, he brings up something he brought up three chapters ago. Uh, because he brought it up and it was a famous criticism of the idea that something like relation R is what matters. And it's uh, the branch line case. If you remember, so he wants to say, I, I'm a reductionist, what matters is a psychological relation. If uh, that person on Mars, when I used a transporter, has all of my psychological makeup, all of my personality, remembers being me, that's all I care about. That's as, that's as good as moment-to-moment uh, mo -moment survival. The, the saying that me one second from now is the same as me now is as good as uh, me on Mars being the same as me now. All that matters is the, the relation R, and if that exists, that, that's good. But then, and, and a lot of people are convinced by that and will say, yeah, I'll use the transporter until they hear the branch line case. And the branch line case is, if you remember, when I press the button, and as far as I'm concerned, nothing's happened, but it's made a duplicate of me on Mars. And then it says, oh, we've damaged your internal organs, and you're going to die shortly. Sorry. You know, but that's OK, because we made the replica as usual. And then, then immediately they think, oh, wait a minute. That's not me. That's just a re replica of me that thinks it's me, because me is the one that's here uh, dying. And if that person claims to be me, I'm going to fight him because he's not me, I'm me. So the branch line case is a really good thought experiment that, uh, to criticize this idea that relation R is what matters. So it really matters for Parfit to come back to it, given that he's really committed to this, and address that criticism. So what does he say about the branch line case to try and soften the blow? Because it, it, it is a thought experiment that really does seem to favor, to, to, to undercut his theory. And what he says is, well, think of it like a sleeping pill. And a sleeping pill, he says, there is a sleeping pill, and this is true. Uh, uh, actually, there are pills that they give when you have surgery. I had surgery on my eye, and they, you have to be awake for that. Uh, but it's pretty traumatic knowing that someone's cutting into your eye. So they give you a pill so that you're awake, but then afterwards, you forget the entire operation. So there's a part of you that's awake and talks to them. And if they videoed you, you could see a video of you talking to them. But you would have no memory of having done that, because that's the effect of the pill. You will forget it. And that's the sleeping pill he sets. And he says, so is that person, that's a, a little branch line. Once you take the pill, 
um, you're awake for a little bit, but that part of you will never be remembered by later you. So this part of you is like a little branch line. It's a part where it remembers being the previous stuff, but then later you will not remember that. It will remember only the previous stuff until you take the pill. Is that you? I mean, what should you feel about that? Should you feel that that was a part of you that died? That there, there's a little person, that taking this pill is like a little death? And he says, no. Uh, but he does say the only way for that person to communicate, the branch line person to communicate with later me, is by writing on them a letter. Because I'm, they can't just think stuff and have later them remember, because the pill undoes that. Uh, and he says, I, I don't remember this happening, but I did once find a letter under my razor. Um, now, I've had experiences like this, uh, another experience, where, um, sadly, uh, I drunk to excess as an undergraduate and um, woke up the next morning with no memory of what I did. But apparently, I was hilarious. And one of the things I did was this. I, I, went, I was an undergraduate at Oxford, and one of the things you do is you go punting in the river. And you punt down the river, and there's a pub on the side. You get out, you get drunk, and then you come back and return the punt. Um, I had too much to drink, and apparently I puked over the side of the punt on the way back, and ducks ate the puke. And everybody who saw this remember this to this day. I've, I've seen friends of mine 30 years later, and they remember this event. I have no memory of it. Did it really happen to me? Um, Parfit said, would say, don't sweat it. You know, it's not that big of a deal. So he thinks that bra the branch line case, once, you, uh, uh, once you're, you, you, you're told you're, you're going to, this version of you on Earth is going to die in a few minutes, he says, you should be okay because you know that there is something in the future, there is that guy in the future who bears relation are at least to you a few, min a few seconds ago when you press the button. You should be okay with it. You should relax and chill. Would you? I don't think so. But he says you should if you think about it. It's just like taking the sleep sleeping pill. A another thing, uh, there's a few things that he does in this where he considers criticisms to his view. Um, and he's predominantly responding to two very major philosophers, Thomas Nagel, who is stu still alive at NYU, and uh, Bernard Williams, who is dead. He, he predeceased Parfit, uh, but he was at Cambridge while um, Parfit was at Oxford. And they both come up with these ingenious sort of examples to try and uh, undercut Parfit's theory. Um, the idea of the series person, I think, is kind of interesting. Um, Nagel says, if Parfit's right, series persons should be perfectly OK. And what series persons are, are people who um, completely re... Yeah, I'll just read you the description. Nagel imagines a community in which everyone over the age of 30 enters a scanning replicator once in every year. This machine destroys a person's brain and body and produces a replica who is R related to this person and who has a body that is exactly similar except that it has not aged or decayed. Um, so it's a, a basically a way of, uh, of remaining perpetually young if you believe Parfit's theory. But if you believe Nagel's theory, Nagel says what matters is the brain, and if you destroy the brain, even if you make a perfect re replica, it's not you. It's a new person. It's just a duplicate that thinks it's you. Just like the, ta the Taj Mahal, when it's rebuilt, is not the Taj Mahal. It's just a copy. So uh, Nagel would say that's death every time you use this. Parfit has to say no. It's a, it's a, um, it's a way of perpetuating your life. Now. Parfit suggests that it would make perfect sense in this community to use, um, to, to use your pronouns to refer not to persons in Nagel sense, such that each time you use the replicator it's a new person, but as uh, series persons. So he says, and I'm going to do that now. I'm going to say I already am a series person. 
And he says, because, of course, there's a first, every series person has a first stage before they ever use the replicator, and I'm on my first stage. Sure, I'll probably die, and he did indeed die, before uh, they invent these replicators, but that doesn't stop me being a series person. I was just the first stage. I never got to the second stage. So I'm going to start using these uh, uh, pronouns that way. And what would be wrong with it? How would you criticize, if you, if you encountered this society, would you tell them, you're wrong, that isn't you anymore. You're an, you, after the replicator, is a different you from that. And they would say, no, that's not how we use pronouns. We use pronouns so that we're the same way. What would you say was wrong? What were they wrong about? And you'd have to say, well, you'd have to refer to some further fact. And then Parfit would say, but I've just destroyed all of those theories in the previous chapters. And there's nothing, there's nothing wrong. And put it this way. Um, we think, uh, I, I think the intuitive pull of things like the branch line case is strong. Uh, so I think that's a reason why people reject Parfit. But how do we know that our normal way of continuing to exist? So for example, I'm absolutely convinced that this version of me is the same person as the person who started this video. How do I know, though? The only way I can know is that I remember being uh, the person who started that. I didn't feel any sudden break. But of course, somebody who used the teletransporter would feel exactly the same way. I actually wrote a, a little story to illustrate this called You and Yours. Um, I'll put a link to it, uh, where you know, people use a, a transporter, and then they're told they're not the same person, and that therefore they don't have the property that they think they do, and they get outraged and take everybody to court. Um, because you would feel. You have, the, the person on Mars has exactly the same evidence that you have that they're the same person as you have that you're the same person a minute ago. There's no uh, way that you can tell, oh, I passed a line there. I felt myself passing a line there that means that I'm not the same person as the one on the other side of the line. That just doesn't happen. Um, so. We just think that there are these walls, says Parfit, but there aren't really these walls. Um, and I think that's what you have to, he says, even he admits, I have a hard time with this, uh, because intuitively we are non-reductionist. We think that um, personal identity is a real thing, that it's one to one, and it's either 100% me or it's not me, where there's no degrees. And it's, it's virtually impossible to rid ourselves of that intuition. So he says, I just have to keep going over my cases. I have to point out, in the case of my division, righty and lefty, um, what each of them would have counted as 100% uh, the original if the other one doesn't exist. And it's stupid to say that the existence of the other one is what stops. The existence of righty is what stops lefty being the original person, or well, the existence of lefty stops righty being the original person. Both of them have exactly what counts and what would have made them the same as the original person if not for the existence of the other. He says, I have to keep reminding myself of that. And he also quotes, uh, I'm not going to go into um, some of the other stuff like, am I a token or a type? Uh, William says, one of the, the problems with relation R is it undercuts some relationships like love. You love individuals, says Williams. And if imagine a case where there were, uh, uh, the same person was duplicated 20 times. Mary Smith, there are 20 Mary Smiths. Which do you love? Um, we would say there's something objectionable about saying, well, I would love all of them equally um, because they're all Mary Smith. And he says, we don't love a type, which is what M Mary Smith would then be a type. Like, are you a Mary Smith or a, you know, are you an instance of Mary Smith, the type Mary Smith? Um, we don't love the type, we love individuals. And um, 
Perfect says, sure, I agree. We do love individuals. Um, but uh, the, one of the problems with loving a type is that a type can't love you back because not everybody, uh, a type is just a group. The only things that can love you back are individuals. Um, so that's one problem. And he says, what Williams is trying to do is trying to say that, uh, ident trying to undercut my theory of identity by saying it commits me to saying what I love is the type. But I don't believe that. I believe that there's a third possibility, which is that I could love a series person. And I could love a series person, which means I could love an individual who then is replicated. But no, you, you, uh, love isn't necessarily uh, a multiple thing. Although, <laughs> I just saw an article about the, the two most identical twins in the world. Uh, they're a pair of women who presumably are uh, as, I don't know how they got this status, but uh, they're, you know, all identical twins are not quite identical. They have, like, I, I knew a pair of, of very identical looking twins in college, but you could tell they were the different ones because they had bad acne and they had different patterns of acne. That was one way to tell the difference. But I remember seeing them sitting across the table from each other and it was like a double take. Wait a minute, it's you again. Uh, so you can have very close. Well, the, these are the most identical. And they have the same boyfriend. And they're okay with him being with the other one. So I don't know. Maybe, that, that op maybe love is not as one-to-one -one as Bernard Williams and Parfit suggests. Um, but uh, in the, Williams imagines love of a type cannot be mutual. Also, Williams is giving a false dilemma between love of a particular body so, yeah, Williams wants to say, what we love is the body. Where, uh, so that would be gone if they were replicated. And Parfit says, no, we don't love the body, we love the person, and the person can survive in relation R. Um, then there's all those cases of uh, uh, weird cases, that, like um, uh, where they divide and they split. They, what is it? They divide every spring and fuse every on page 303. I'm not entirely sure what he's trying to do with that, but he, he's imagining all these different possibilities. And he's saying, I think what he's trying to do is he's trying to get us to realize that our commitment to personal identity as a one-to-one -one relationship is kind of a cultural thing. And it's not based on reality. That these different cultures would have equally good uh, grounds for insisting on their views of what makes someone uh, the same or, what, or using these terms of ancestral self and um, descendant self. Their terminology is equally defensible, makes sense. This would be a functioning society where there would be people that loved and treated each other okay, even though they had these different conceptions of personal identity. Um, so. I think that's what he's trying to do in that one. But uh, perhaps the, the most interesting one is the sort of Methuselah one, where somebody continues in the same body forever because they've got, uh, I don't know, maybe, um, maybe they're using the, the machine that keeps them uh, eternally young, but they don't remember more than about 80 years back. How would they refer to uh, earlier parts, like 300 years ago, where they have no memory of it? They would talk about their earlier self or something like that, but they wouldn't talk about me. They would say an earlier self um, went exploring in the Himalayas for a few hundred years, or some earlier selves. Uh, so he wants to show... Now, of course, they would be connected by a chain because they would remember, uh, you know, 70 years ago, and that person would remember 70 years ago, and that person would remember 70 years ago. So they would be chain connected in the same way that we're connected to our earliest youth. Uh, but that, what Parfit is suggesting is that chain connection is not enough by itself. You need direct connections. You need to be able to directly remember. 